Can you enhance that? What if we magnify and enhance? I have an idea. Let's enhance the reflection of the perpetrator from that distant vote for idiot bumper sticker on that old Volkswagen Beetle. Gavin Stein here with another review. Not long ago, I did an admittedly rather scathing review of Topaz's JPEG to RAW AI because quite frankly, it didn't feel like AI. In our test images, it didn't turn them into RAWs. Frankly, I would say we would have been better off just using the JPEGs and they certainly didn't approach the data, the dynamic range and the information that we have in a RAW file. And so, I was a bit negative, while at the same time admitting that Topaz, a company who's been among us for years and is perhaps most noted for its noise reduction software, although with the advent of usable ISO 12,000 or higher images out of camera, maybe we're not using noise reduction software quite as much as we used to be. However, Topaz is still innovating. And while JPEG to RAW AI did not impress me. And I think that the term AI is, is thrown about a bit much. We are seeing advancements in machine learning and things like that. And so I thought Topaz has made some really good stuff and I need to give them a fair shake. Let's try a couple of these other AI programs that they're touting is the Topaz AI Gigapixel, beautiful photo enlargements using machine learning up to 600% preserving image quality, saying it's truly intelligent. That they've trained this with sample images and those samples are actually gonna be used to give you crisp, clear results. The other product that goes kind of right beside it is the Sharpen AI, which again is supposed to be more than just sharpening. We've seen uh, resolution increasing tools, whether built into Photoshop or separately for years. We've seen sharpening tools for years, but both of these are claiming to have a level of artificial intelligence. And as we've seen with tools that are supposed to, for example, stabilize an image in Photoshop, while they can be useful, they do tend to produce a lot of artifacts. So we are gonna punish both of these, just like I did JPEG to raw AI. And we're gonna see if this is really AI or if it's but yes, we're going to see if, if all the AI stuff is just like what we've seen in the past, or if we're truly coming into an era where we can magnify and enhance. Can you magnify that? Magnify and enhance. Let's find out. I'm actually going to start with uh, the sharpening, right? This is Topaz Sharpen AI, and I have nothing in here just yet. Let's look at this one. And I have kind of looked these over. I've selected a few images to try out. Now, this is not a good image and it doesn't pretend to be. This is an old image from my first digital camera back in the early 2000s. I think it was an Olympus or something. Three megapixels. I paid like 300 bucks. I think I bought it at Staples. This is a 2000 pixel image that is also blurry. It was just for some reason sitting in my archives from years ago because it's digital and we don't delete. Like many Topaz, software tools, and you can also do plug-in versions of these, uh, but I'm gonna use the standalones for now. It's very simple. It's not like the Unsharp Mask tool where there's a zillion sliders, which in a way is good, but maybe not. Uh, sharpen, stabilize, and focus. So I'm just gonna kind of go through and let it render a preview on these. Okay, so I've got all three of these modes. Now, admittedly, you're normally not trying to make a great print out of a blurry photo, but there are times when we need to do some recovery and we're gonna look at maybe a couple examples of that today. Okay, this is a 200% on this 2000. This is, let's try stabilize. I'm just gonna try, whoa. All right, are you seeing this? That is absolutely astounding. All right, um, wow. <laughs> Look, we're not picking someone's face off a distant bumper sticker, but that's more than sharpening. That's more than simply uh, blur reduction. That's restoration on a level that I got to be honest, and I love gadgets and software gadgets like this, and I've been dreaming of magnifying enhance for years. 
that's the closest thing, hands down, that I've ever seen on this image, on this image. So the image of the blurry house, we're going to come back to that. Uh, what I'm going to do so you guys don't have to wait, because some of these take a while to process. It's, it's using like 90% GPU when it runs these. Um, I'm going to stabilize this one. Each mode you select, you have a few sliders on, and then it has to render a preview if you want to see a preview for each mode that you change it. Look at this. This is good. All right, this is not a bad portrait. I mean, I'm already zoomed in quite a bit. This is a usable portrait, but I had a little bit of motion blur and it's really bringing in her eyes a little bit too sharp here on the rock, but it's easy enough to mask that out, right? Because it doesn't know what I want to be sharp and what I want to be blurry. The sharpen is sharpening. Uh, let's, let's take one more, because I know this review is kind of geared towards gigapixel AI but I wanted to cover both of these because I think they go hand in hand and you're going to be using both with certain images. Uh, this one, again, a super old photo. This might even be scanned from film of my little sister when I, I don't know, I was, probably, I was probably 17 when I made this photo. And you know, look at the hair. There's detail coming into the hair. Uh, it's not really bringing this back. I think it, it has a little harder time on faces and we could turn it up. I mean, we could turn it way up we might start introducing more artifacts, but you know what? It still looks pretty dang good. I mean, it's, it's improving a lot. Let's switch to focus and see what's better. Uh, sharpen, stabilize, and focus. Again, you have those three modes. So you can use this in a more general way of just a little bit of sharpening on an image, or you can go to stabilize and focus. I, I would say if I'm just gently sharpening, I mean, an unsharp mask or something like that works good. It's almost worse with focus, which is weird because this image is out of focus. I think stabilize here is the best. These are something. I, I got to give Topaz credit for this. Uh, this is another level. Okay, let's go into this Gigapixel AI. So Gigapixel, while it does have some, some uh, noise and blur reduction built into it, is not the same as the sharpening AI tool. And so when we go into Gigapixel here, we're going to see this image. And this is from the Twin Cities. It's an HDR. There's nothing wrong with it. And I think that's the key here that I want to look at in Gigapixel also is not only the ability to enhance damaged images or take really low res images and increase them, but to take images that are good, this is a 5,000 pixel image. But if I wanted to print this at 100 inches, say, and I do love large prints, let's increase this four times. So you can say how much you want to resize it by up to six times seems to be the max. Uh, there's a few settings, noise and blur reduction, output settings, all that kind of stuff. And here is, let's just look. Wow. Here's the original on the left. And it's just kind of rendering previews. Look at this. And bear in mind, we are really zooming in. A 4x upscale on this makes this a 21,000 pixel image. So 273 megapixels is a 4x increase in this. Look at the textures on the buildings. I mean, when you upscale this normally, this is just blurring it, right? It's just kind of blending those pixels together. It's actually putting information that didn't exist in, guys. That's magnify and enhance. That is magnify and enhance, all right? Okay, let's be serious though. It can't magnify and enhance everything. We've seen even with the sharpening tool that there are some limitations in the face. It seems to really do good with textures. I'm gonna run a bunch of these. I mean, we can see that this is pretty wild. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run some combinations of Sharpen AI and Gigapixel AI and process them, let the GPU do its work, and then I'm going to open those files one on top of the other in Photoshop, and we're just going to examine them straight up. No BS. You know what? And the name of this is Gigapixel. AI Gigapixel? Gigapixel's a thousand megapixels. That's a, that's a pretty bold claim. We're going to try and, before the end, hang around to the end, even though it's maybe completely pointless, we're going to see what happens if we try to make a gigapixel or something approaching. Okay, look, I've done a ton of rendering. I've practiced with some images. I've saved them out. I've stacked them up in Photoshop so that you guys don't have to watch me tinker with this for hours on end. Um, let's look and see what we got. I, I've got the image. I'm going to explain each step of what we did along the way so you understand, but this way you don't have to watch me do every single one of these. Okay, so what I've done here on these sample images is I've brought in the original and I've combined. So on the house image, first I ran the sharpen. Then I ran gigapixel to increase the resolution. Because remember, it was only an old 2000 pixel image. It was three megapixels. And so I've increased this to 7,000. I've increased this to like 30 
plus megapixels. I've done it two ways. And so that's the size of my canvas. And what I did is I was very consistent in the rules of how I did this. I would process if needed in Sharpen AI, then go to Gigapixel AI to resize, then save it out and bring it into Photoshop and stack it on top of an image that was resized to the exact same pixel dimensions using standard Photoshop. And I would just use the automatic standard Photoshop upscaling, which as upscaling goes is pretty good. For years, I've mostly used that because it's been pretty well as good as whatever else is out there. What we're looking at is a three megapixel image upscaled in Photoshop right here. And there's nothing. I mean, it's a garbage image. Like there's blurry people, there's blurry stuff. There's nothing good about this image in any way. This is Topaz Sharpen AI and Topaz Gigapixel. Oh my goodness. Now look, there, it's creating information here from whatever database it's using, right? Um, there's some weird texture. Maybe that could be grass. I mean, it's interpreting things. Look at the people. Like you could tell it's blurry, guys. It put in the telephone poles. It's putting in like hair, a hat. Like you can actually tell that they're walking away from me versus toward me. And you really couldn't even see that before. The mailbox, the wheel, it can't really interpret the numbers and letters because I guess there's not enough, right? You can, it, the machine learning, the AI only goes so far, right? Uh, but wow, okay. So this is just a wow example. I mean, just look at the detail. Now, for point of reference, I ran this also. You see how there's a layer here that says res sharp. With res sharp, I up it first in Gigapixel and then did the sharpening to deblur it in Sharpen AI. It's not as good. It's a lot more pasty. See this? Here is if I up it first. So for some reason, it's working better. Wow. I mean, this is, it's absolutely unbelievable. And everybody I've showed it to is like, whoa, now is there weird distortions? But yeah, but it's following the lines. This isn't like patch tool in Photoshop where it might work amazing and it might just put a random face in the middle of your image that says, vote for stupid. All right, it's not, it might, might put a random piece of text that says magnify and enhance. This isn't doing that. This is putting texture of objects, doors, snow, but it's keeping, it's not just replacing it with a random image of snow, it's keeping it true to the position and texture and somehow blending all of that together. That's amazing. I could sit here and look at this because this is the closest thing I've ever seen in my life other than like Star Trek, right? So magnify and enhance. It's one thing to see it on Star Trek or CSI or something like that, but this is real. This is something you can go download a trial of right now. Remember I said the HDR, right? This one I upscaled to 21,000 pixels, all right? Which is what we were just looking at a few minutes ago. Now, why would you do this? Well, this does matter for those of us like myself that might print 60, 70, 80, 90 inch prints, right? And we're using cameras like, like the A7R series that are 40 plus megapixels. They look great, but it's still not as much as we had like on four by five sheet film back in the day, right? The sensors aren't there yet. So if you did a beautiful image, and I've talked a lot about my 4x5, playing with 4x5 in the past, if you do a beautiful image and scan it perfectly on 4x5, it's a lot of work, by the way, to get it that good. But if everything comes together, you can get hundreds of megapixels. And our sensors just aren't doing that. And, and you might think that doesn't matter. I know if you're printing 8x10s, but if you're putting art on the wall that's big, that's scaled to walls like the painters did, you want that resolution. Let's zoom in. I'm going to go to one to one. Oh. And okay, so you can see this is Photoshop upscale. Remember, rather than just starting and having to wait for all this, I've loaded the original 5,500 5, pic pixel image in. I upscaled it to uh, 21,468 here in Photoshop. And now I'm gonna turn on the gigapixel layer and we're just gonna see, whoa. And here's the thing. Now here's an image, unlike the house image, that's already good. There's nothing wrong with this image. And so the question is, at, at what point is it pointless to keep resizing? At what point is it pointless to sharpen? I could take the image that I uploaded, upscaled in Photoshop, right? And I could sharpen just for the sake of speed. Let's just use an unsharp mask because it's pretty good. It's going to be slow. 
Uh, let's just do a little bit of sharpening. Heck, let's do a lot of sharpening. See if we can, you know, bring it in. Yeah, there's some detail. Okay, let's sharpen it too. Up, upscale and sharpen a little bit to try and really compete. Okay, I mean, we got a good, sharp, clean image, but let's turn on the AI layer. Unbelievable. Look at this. This is 100%, 200 plus, 273 megapixel image, 100%. There's a little bit of noise, and it, but I do notice like sometimes in the texture, in the grass areas, it kind of is interpolating, right? So on an image like this where it starts out already really detailed, it's doing really well. It's not having to do a lot of guesswork. I mean, if I was printing this huge, look at this, look at the old machinery. It's just bringing detail in, guys, and I don't know how it's doing it. I didn't even, I don't even own this software yet. I downloaded a trial. Topaz didn't even give it to me. I'm not, remember, my last review of their software was scathing, and now notice, it almost looks like Arabic on this sign when it's not. It can't interpolate letters really if there's not enough letter there to form it but oh my goodness okay remember this is photoshop and sharpening upscaling photoshop standard upscaling and sharpening this is ai okay i'm gonna keep moving i don't want to make this too long this one i exported now again now i'm trying to punish it right i'm torturing it i exported this at like 1200 pixels it was a pretty clean file i'm going to show you the clean file as well i exported this at like 1200 pixels upscaled it to 4800 so that was 4x upscale right this is in photoshop okay so now we're taking an image that lacks information right maybe you've got an image from the web you're trying to enhance this could be a big deal with forensics work uh things like that right not just in photography so we're kind of looking at both sides we're looking at taking images that are broken and need to be fixed and taking images that are not broken and we're just trying to maximize the quality and see if it works for both and so far it kind of does Okay, and you can see it's blurry. It's an upscaled image. This is Topaz. Gigapixel. Wow. Now bear in mind, this second one I'm turning on is upscaled to 4800 from 1200. Four times. Look at the difference. Now, it's not putting faces super clear because it... it it's kind of a texture. It seems that the AI is largely texture based, but that's a start. And it is still enhancing the face, right? Uh, you can notice like on this poster here though, it's kind of almost makes it look like abstract. Now I'm gonna turn on the original file. This is an actual 4,800 pixel export from Lightroom of the file that I shot. Boom. Now that's a whole different animal, right? Now you're seeing faces on posters, you're seeing details. So when you compare to the Topaz AI, no, it, it's not that great. Compared to Photoshop, yeah. I mean, if, if a 1200 pixel image is all you have and you're trying to, for whatever reason, increase the size of it, this is really something. Okay, let's, oh, this is, this is just ridiculous. Okay, let's, let me show you this. I'm, I'm, I'm being ridiculous here. This is another 4800 pixel image. Um, but I exported this one at 800 pixels, all right? So again, I had the full res file. We're, we're torturing it here. I exported this at 800, upscaled it in Photoshop here to 4800, and then here's the 4X upscale from Topaz. Okay, it still kind of looks like it's a phone image, but like we're going from a big blurry mess that was 800, 800 pixels, right? And remember, 800 pixels is like this little phone image. Zooming in, okay, look at these lights, completely blurry, of course. It's like it put a city in the background. And here's the original full, right? So you can see, like, it is interpolating information here. It's doing, it's saying, hey, there's lights there, so I'm going to use a pattern of lights that matches that shape. Now, when I say the full, I mean I exported the actual quality file at resolution and I'm laying it over, but wow. Coming back again to AI Sharpen, kind of bouncing back and forth because these, these are so synonymous. I almost feel like if you're gonna get one, you should get both. This is the original, okay, not a bad image. Let's zoom out, not a bad image, but a little bit soft. I should have done better around those eyes. Here's Photoshop's. If I were to go up and sharpen and use shake reduction, okay? And I almost never do. I know if you're in a pinch, you can kind of dial it in and play with it, but it just makes it look ugly and high-passed. 
This is Topaz. This looks like, this is a photograph. I mean, I would print this. This would actually be an enhancement to my print. Wow, that's, that's really cool. I can't get this with sharpening, guys. I just can't. It won't work. It ain't gonna happen. Look, if I here to take the original, just run a bunch of unsharp mask. It's just, again, kind of like, kind of like the shake reduction, a little bit different. See what I mean, though? It's just, ew. But the topaz, yeah. And I could turn it up, turn it down. I masked it away here on the, on the wall so it didn't make the wall look weird. See if I turn the mask off. All right, I said we'd try to put its name to the test, Gigapixel. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take this image here, taken down in San Luis Potosi State. 7,600 pixels. This is an A7R Mark II file on a 24 millimeter prime TSE Mark II. It is razor sharp. It's, it's one of my favorite images from, from Mako. And we're gonna try and gigapixel it, okay? The max I can do is 4X, so I'll do some math. I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch the processing. I'm gonna run these, load them both in Photoshop, and we're gonna do a side-by-side. -side. We've seen some pretty amazing stuff tonight. Let's just see if there's a benefit in going gigapixel. Okay guys, I'm running a beast of a machine with 11 gigabyte GPU, and that GPU was being pushed to like 90%, and it probably took, it still probably only took five or six minutes, but we 6X'd, just so you can see what I did, I put my 7600, I put it into here. It's not actually 6Xing, it looks like at the moment it has a hard limit of 32,000. Let me try manually. Yeah, it'll only go to 32,000 pixels. So it's actually more like 5Xing it. Uh, this is not quite a gigapixel in this case. So um, I guess it's a little unfair. I mean, if I really want to nitpick, right? It seems that 32,000 is the max and I'm getting my calculator. Okay, 32,000 square, if I had a square image, is 1024. So technically, yes, this maxes out at a gigapixel. In this case, because it's not a square image, we have 32 and 19, which is uh, 32, 19. 608 megapixels, about 609. Let's zoom into 100%. This is ridiculous. Like, okay, I print big, but I don't know if there'd be much benefit here. This, remember, I mean, this actually looks shockingly good. This was a 42 megapixel original raw file, cropped a little bit, it's like 36, razor sharp. This is 100% 600 megapixels from Photoshop, what happens if I turn on Gigapixel AI? Okay, I mean, there's no denying you can't do that with sharpening. It's bringing detail back into the rope. Bear in mind, we're looking at 600 megapixels. Now, is the detail perfect? Like my native file at normal resolution, zoomed one to one, no. But we're one to one, we're at 100%, on a 4K display of 609 megapixels, effectively, if this was square, it would be a gigapixel. This is, this is the Photoshop upscaled, right? Not just dragged or, or like actually gone in and upscaled it in Photoshop with Control Command I using automatic, which presumably is choosing the best resampling mode and I've had pretty good luck with it. Here's the water. I mean, it does look a little sharpened, but again, how much are we at, right? Look at the moss and the water. Here it is, just upscaled. The difference is this shocking on an image that's already so clear uh, as it was like on the old house, right? When we combine the sharpening and the gigapixel. But if I was printing 400 inches, yeah, heck yeah, I would want this because it, look at the detail on the leaves and stuff. It is improving those details by honestly quite a fair margin. All right, I, I think we've seen enough. I mean, starting with, with this guy from a blurry, nothing, three megapixel image from 20 years ago to this. I mean, I'm still not gonna print this, but wow, I've never seen anything like it to more practical things like this, to 
to portraits, cleaning those up using Sharpen AI, to this. Now bear in mind, most of the images we looked at here, if, if I use Sharpen AI, I told you, like the portrait image, I didn't even upscale that, I was just showing you Sharpen AI. So this was kind of a combo review, but I feel like Sharpen AI backs up Gigapixel AI because Gigapixel is, is resizing, and at some point, depending on how perfect your image was, you may actually need some extra sharpening. Or if you're doing restorations, this could be phenomenal. Sharpen AI, phenomenal for restorations, really both of them. You know, if you're restoring an old four by five tin type or something, you wanna bring detail back. In the faces, there is some lack, it's not perfect if it's really bad, right? It'll sharpen them up, it'll clear up the eyes, sharpen AI will, uh, but it's not, it, it's not gonna take either one of them. It's not gonna take a face where it's black, right? It's torn off and just interpolate it. That, we don't have that level of AI yet, but I'll be honest, this is more of an AI than anything I've ever seen. This actually is, okay? This photo of this old house, when I first ran this, my jaw dropped. This may be early stages, but this is magnifying and hands. So what are my thoughts? What's my final thoughts after my last scathing Topaz review of, of uh, JPEG to raw AI, where I just wasn't that excited? What are my thoughts on this? Un, un, unreal, unreal. Guys, if, no, if for no other reason, just go pull up some old photos and download trials and play with this. I will probably have to buy this because there's nothing else that even comes close. And while I may not need this much resolution or that much restoration power every day, this is the business I'm in. And these are tools that we can use. This is not just another sharpening tool and it's not just another upscaling tool. These are doing things that we've never seen before. And I know they've got some kind of database thing going on and stuff behind the scenes. Is that really an AI? We could debate that. But the point is we are magnifying and enhancing to, to a large degree, I'm giving these a resounding thumbs up. And Topaz didn't even ask me to review these. I mean, after my last review, <laughs> I doubt they would. But both of these products, I, I sound like I'm being paid, but I'm truly astounded by what both of these can do. Go play with them. Because if, if you've been, I don't care how long you've been in this business, you've never seen anything like this and at least go download the trials. Maybe you don't need it, but go play with it. Topaz Labs, you've impressed me. Thank you. Wow. <laughs>